welcome everyone of YouTube to our review of two games that introduced us to the running, jumping, running, tattooed and slightly more running, an all-round badass that is Faith. Not that one, I'm afraid, I am sorry, it's that one. The first game really, really, really set the movement for a lot of games to follow, like Assassin's Creed and especially a really bad dying light with your jumping mechanics. I'm sorry, he ain't making that jump. But first things first, Mirror's Edge 1 came out on the 11th of November 2008 and was developed by DICE. That's quite a gap between Mirror's Edge 1 and Catalyst. Was it worth the wait? You know what, that's what we're here to find out. Okay, so first things first, we're going to talk about the combat of Mirror's Edge 1. I have to say, that personally, I just couldn't get along with it. And oh yes, I can hear you out there, of people of YouTube saying, But Rich, that game came out so long ago, you have to give it some slack. Well, don't you worry, Jimmy. I will. I will. Now it may come as a surprise to some of you out there that have watched our videos that me, Bob and Danny are not too good at the whole running away from things, but in this first game that's kind of your only option, the combat was lacklustre at best. It felt like a very old first person RPG where you had the same movement with your fist, where you punched and there was no real combat technique whatsoever, other than punch a normal guy three times and run away before SWAT shows up. Also there was no lock on technique. So you sort of always had to keep moving the right analog stick around, which in a boss battle, as you could have just watched then, it kind of gets irritating. It's not bad, but it does take away from the overall immersion when you're in a brawl with an enemy who is maybe, dare I say it, just as good as Faith. This cannot be! I'm afraid so, bub. That being said, I feel at the time, all the way back in 2008, with the tech that they had, they did a fairly decent job with at least trying to make Faith's movements flow from one to the other. It didn't really work all that well, and at times it did get frustrating, but it didn't remove you too much from the overall feel of the game. So, I gotta say kudos to DICE on that one. With all that being said, I am almost fairly certain that the team there at DICE really kind of understood that the combat really wasn't all that great because they gave you the option to use a gun all you had to do was run up to an enemy and kiss slide and kick him and knock the gun out of his hand and you could pick it up and use it yourself to just mow down the remaining enemies which admittedly did make clearing out a room providing you could get hold of the gun a lot easier than it would have been if you had to punch and kick them so we move on to mirrors edge catalyst and we here at rich and bob gaming are really 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 happy to see that the second game's combat is so much more in depth even though you don't get to use a gun it doesn't matter because faith isn't a stone cold killer but she can knock you on your ass in an instant and that's exactly what we love doing in this game the combat felt fresh it felt alive it was easy and nice to see that it changed so much from the first game all those years ago but they definitely succeeded where they failed in the past with all of Faith's movements in Catalyst feeling so responsive and fluent, moving effortlessly from punch to punch to punch to kick maybe, or even these brilliant new takedowns where you put your knee in someone's face. But the use of melee weapons and guns being taken out of the game, I know a lot of you out there are going to be going, well, that sounds very unfair considering the enemies can use weapons. The game never makes you feel that it's unfair. It's a very good thing that they've managed to do and I can imagine it was pretty hard to accomplish. With the exclusion of weapons and guns for Faith to use, they had to come up with a new way of combat and they did this very well by turning the environment into your weapon. You're supposed to run along a wall and jump off and kick someone in the face. You're supposed to use the environment to separate enemies and get them one by one so that you can just quickly take them out. As most of the k guys are not equipped to deal with that fast paced combat that Faith does. However, if I had to pick a downside of Catalyst's combat, it wouldn't be the combat itself, it would be some of the enemies. Some of the enemies are, how should I put this, ridiculous. Like this guy right here, you physically can't combo him on a game where comboing is pretty much your entire arsenal. Now some of you out there might be going, well Rich, I can combo them. Yeah, well you know what, good for you, but here at Rich and Bob Gaming we weren't able to combat them. Every time we tried, they stopped us. And it really slowed down the combat in a game that relies on speed, it slowed it down too much. It was like, well, really? Oh great, another one of these guys is on his way. Quick, kick him in the head three times so that he gets knocked out. But those enemies are few and far between. It's mostly about building that focus meter and seamlessly comboing through k grunts as you make your way through this massive, beautiful, futuristic city. 
Now with the combat of both Mirror's Edge 1 and Mirror's Edge 2 analysed and out of the way, we hope that we've given you enough to go on. So now we're going to move on to the big one. We're going to move on to movement. How does Faith feel when she moves in both games? So without further ado, let's roll up our sleeves and get right down on to the movement. Oh, Mirror's Edge 1. When I said earlier in the video that you said the movement for a lot of games to follow, like Assassin's Creed, I meant by the free running. I'm pretty sure Assassin's Creed 1 came out before this, but I'm not too sure on that. I'd have to check. But what I mean is this game was the was the first main game where your sole movement of getting around the world around you was free running. There was no other option. Uh, in my opinion, the first game didn't handle it too well. It did an okay job, but Faith kind of moved like a rubber band coated in jam. It was sloppy at best. And it didn't really make you feel like you are in control half the time. Faith, when she would jump onto a ledge or something, if you would press the button once, you know, a little bit too soon or too late. She would randomly jump on and then do this weird bounce off. It, it, it got really frustrating. Or with ledges, sometimes Faith just wouldn't grab onto the ledge that you're trying to jump to. Doesn't matter how many times you press that grab button. Trains already left the station, pal. It ain't happening. Now, as you can probably guess, I was never a fan of the movement of Mirror's Edge 1. I loved the game, believe me guys, I loved it. It was, it was, at the time, it, it felt very fresh and something completely new. And I love things that are fresh and new, but Mirror's Edge 1's movement was not the thing I liked about that game. It, I really, really couldn't, I just couldn't get on with it. It was one of these things where it was a very hit or miss. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I was unfortunately one of the people that hated it, which is kind of a, an annoying thing when your whole defense in this game, pretty much, is to run away. Now, you might be thinking that I'm being awfully negative about Mirror's Edge 1, and I apologize for being so negative about it, but the game did come out in 2008, so, you know, as I said earlier in the video, I'm going to give it some slack. At the time when it came out, I can imagine that it felt very good, but up to now nowadays standards, it doesn't feel that good at all. It, it, it feels lazy and sloppy. But that's not due to anything other than time, I think, and the how far consoles and gameplay has progressed in such a really short time. But it can get very frustrating when she does things that you don't that you haven't told her to do. So just be wary of that. Now here we are at Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Now I didn't have a very long time to record Catalyst. It was kind of, it was very much, uh, I had about three days maybe to actually get pieces that I needed to do. And I was recording Mirror's Edge 1 and Catalyst at the same time. So I had a good feel for both of them right next to each other, back to back. Um, I was really happy when I found this level in Mirror's Edge Catalyst where I thought, oh, hang on, this is, this is very reminiscent of platforming. Um, the movement in Mirror's Edge Catalyst was vastly improved. I was amazed by how much it improved. I was thinking when Mirror's Edge Catalyst arrived through my door, I was like, well, judging by how Mirror's Edge 1 was, I'm really hoping that they kind of got another way to move around or just fixed their movements completely. They definitely fixed the movement. Um, what they had been able to do, unlike a lot of game companies out there, I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of games companies out there that basically produce the same game with the same movements, just updated graphics, and that there is not what us here, us gamers, want. We don't want that. We want something that improves where the other games failed. It shows a company that, dare I say it, actually listens to the gamers that are playing their games, and this here was such a welcome relief. I started playing it, and... Immediately, I could tell the difference. Faith moves fluently. She's faster. The movements are faster. The, the whole thing just feels very immersive when you're running through this massive city or when you're in a room like this where you've got to kind of think about the route that you have to take because you've got laser beams and things everywhere. Now, as I was playing Mirror's Edge Catalyst, um, I have a slight confession. There was a, a moment where... I dropped my Xbox One controller, and my Xbox One controller, the left bumper broke. Um, so now, whenever you press the left bumper in, 
it doesn't do anything. Nine times out of ten, it does nothing. So, as you can imagine, in the game where the left bumper is the jump mechanic, is the jump button and whatnot, it, uh, it takes away from it. But, I didn't get frustrated at it, because it was, it was so relieving to actually when the button did work, which admittedly was few and far between, and it's one of the reasons why I had to stop recording Catalyst. Um, it was still, it still felt very fresh. I mean, the, the whole overall feel of the game, even then, was so nice and so welcoming. And the thing I loved most about this game was, the first game was very linear. You, it was kind of like, go here, do this mission, finish the level, have a, like a, a cutscene, then you're straight on to the next mission. This one is a massive open world. And when I say massive, I mean it is huge. Not to the likes of Skyrim, it's not that big, but it's huge for the fact that the only mode of transportation if you have is your two little legs. So I guess what it narrows down to out there, guys, is if you played Mirror's Edge 1 and you thought, oh, I really don't like the movement of this game, I'm definitely not buying Mirror's Edge 2. No. You go out, you take your bank card out, and you say, Oi, I need to buy myself Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Right now. I think the only thing really left to talk about now is the graphics. Now, there's not really much to say here, as I said earlier on in the video, that Mirror's Edge 1 came out in 2008, which is a long-ass time ago. But I still think it did a fairly decent job of portraying the city the way it was supposed to be portrayed with the story and the world that Faith was in. It looks very clean, looks very modern. It was... It felt very fresh when you're running around the buildings and, and whatnot and jumping from roof to roof as you see in here. It still looked very nice even though it was all the way back then. Okay, now we're jumping right into Mirror's Edge Catalyst's graphics. Now, Mirror's Edge Catalyst graphics are amazing. The reason why they're amazing, no, they're not the best graphics in gaming out there, not by a long shot, but the reason they're amazing is because they do a fantastic job of remaining true to the original game. You still know that you're in Faith's world, even though it looks slightly different and more enhanced and more realistic, it's still her world that you knew from the first game, but this time you are freely given the chance to explore everything as you see fit, when and whenever you want. Um, it, it, it doesn't take away from anything, it just adds more to the story of Mirror's Edge. And with that, guys, we come to the end of our review. Now, here at Rich and Bob Gaming, we don't do the whole 8.5 out of 10 or 4 out of 5 or whatever the system that other channels do. No, we're just going to tell you one of two things. Either to go and get the game or not go and get the game. We personally here think that there's no need for you guys to go and play Mirror's Edge 1. Because Mirror's Edge Catalyst is set before Mirror's Edge 1, so you're not missing out on anything. That game was so long ago, you don't really need to worry about it, but Catalyst is a definite, definite, definite must go and get and play. To experience this world that these guys have built, and to run around it as Faith, and to be Faith, is an amazing, amazing game and experience, and you guys need to experience it for yourselves. And of course, I have been Rich, special thanks to Bob and Danny who have helped me a lot with this. Other than that, what can we say except join us next time for another review or another gameplay. Come and watch us, come and give us a like, come and give us a thumbs up, a subscribe. Start conversations in the comments, we love to hear feedback from you guys. And if there's anything you guys want us to do, you let us know and we'll get right on it. Take it easy and see you guys soon.